Today we're going to be looking at the rotating rhythm generator, which is a part of Ableton's CV tool set. Um, CV tools will allow you, especially if you have a modular system, be able to create a bi-directional communication between um, the DAW and your modules. So your modules, you can take signals in, not just audio, LFOs and various other things. You can use those to uh, modulate or to further sort of alter your VST or native instruments or audio processors. And you can also take signals from the DAW to essentially drive uh, your modules. Um, but you're not really restricted just to using uh, external modules. You can also do, uh, you can use them internally without actually having uh, any modular equipment. So we're going to look at the rotating rhythm generator, RRG. It doesn't exactly flow, but there we go. Um, once you've dropped it in on the channel, I'd suggest if this is your first time, sort of turn everything off. The way I look at the uh, the generator is that it's it's kind of split into two sections. You've got this kind of half, which is very familiar. Um, it's a bit like using a drum rack. So you've got the note number. That's the sample or the note that you want to address. The velocity, the length, how long it should be, uh, the gate length should be. So you have the divisions, um, sixteenth notes. So there'll be 16 of them in a bar. You know, you'll have eighth notes and various other um, subdivisions. And these are very much the same as what you'll see in the arpeggiator. The offset allows you to apply a, an additional uh, displacement offset, which means that if something happens uh, twice in a bar, half notes, you can move the half note, instead of being on one and three, Move it to two and four, or halfway through the and of one and the and of three. So this is kind of how the offset works. Swing, I imagine everyone is familiar with what swing does. We won't worry about odds just for the time being. Um, and this is essentially it. If you learn this kind of section, then you can apply it to two, three, and four. The thing to kind of understand is that it's not necessarily a replacement to um, generating rhythms, uh, you know, drawing them in the MIDI window or playing them in, in real time. Um, the way I look at it, it allows you to run really quite sort of uh, unusual kind of uh, rhythmic relationships. So um, that's something to look forward to. So you need to have Ableton in play for this to work. So let's start with uh, something simple-ish. One note per bar. Kick drum. I'll put the metronome on. So far so good. Change the subdivision. So now we've got a bit more of a cross rhythm, which is great. Half notes, one and three. One, two, three, four. Three, eight. One, three. So if we were doing something like house techno or whatever, something that requires four on the floor, there you go. We're doing the Mozambique. Here we are. That's what we have. And that's essentially it. You can um, take the same methodology and move it to uh, another voice. So this will be a snare drum. 16th notes. You can hear there. It gives you a lot of Great rhythms. So you can hear here that it's on one, two, three. So we want it in a slightly different place. You can 
hear that? No, it's moved. So eight thirty-second notes move the uh, pattern one quarter note. So now the snare drums on two and four. Now there's nothing here that is not achievable by any other means of uh, of making or creating drum pads. So there's nothing of interest in this. You know, humans will not be uh, scared. So this is, uh, let me move this to a hi-hat. This is quarter notes, 3 sixteenths. This is great. Because now we're in that cross rhythm territory. And this is really what it uh, provides you with. One sixth, more triplets, eighth notes, pretty standard, twelve, sixteen. You get the idea. So it's a possibility of being able to go, what's it like if I have uh, a higher pattern in three sixteens? snare drum pattern in 3-8, you can start to become more complex. Become your own Brazilian kind of battery. Admittedly, this, uh, this rhythmic approach is not necessarily everyone's flavor. you the ability to uh, explore all of this. So in the main you've got four voices. You can have them to be whatever you want them to be. So here it's kick, snare, hi-hat. Let's change this to uh, the tom sound. Oh, not F2. This is so you can see here, let's say, that the hi hat and this mid tom are sitting in the same place. So this is where you could use things like the offset to create space. You can see, you can get quite far out with this. Now, one of the things that you have here is the rotator. So the rotator will will essentially um, each note will be flipped and have the uh, the rhythm or the function settings of a different channel. So you can see here it, they've shifted. Within this, you'll find uh, you know a number of variations. You can map that to a MIDI controller. Um, if you're like me, you might use the Max for Live kind of uh, LFO um, devices and set them to uh, some kind of random function. So 
so far so good. So that's kind of it, really. Um, I'm just going to play out with, uh, with an example that uses the Euclidean um, patterns. So kick drum going in, uh, in uh, half notes. So there we have it in eighth and shifted or offset by one whole quarter note. So the thing about the Euclidean patterns is that where you have um, an equally uh, divided, in other words, it results in a in a in an in an even number. So sort of if we change this to four, you get a very different drum pattern to one where you use eight and three. So you want to keep these kind of ratios in mind. So I still want eight steps, but what the algorithm does is to try and um, fill those steps based on the number of fills. So if you say take three notes and fill them across eight steps equally, it will try and find the mathematical or the best placement for that. So there's two. So that brings us back to two and four. So you can try all these kinds of ratios. Eight and five, eight and three. You can also make it seven and five. Seven and three. Seven and four. So it's kind of an antidote to uh, Squareness. There. Yeah, very straight now. Eight and four. A number that divides very equally with both of them. I like this one because especially with the uh, with the Batu kit, it sounds like a, a very rough kind of uh, mega rhythm. So here the hi hat is in eight and four. Make it nine and five. Seven. And let's take the tempo up. One seventy two. Again, you can move this around, use the rotator. There's a space because channel four is turned off. So even though it's not present, it still uh, serves a function. I hope uh, that's helped and um, get exploring.